Hi there folks. We've been getting a lot of emails recently from people who want to follow the radical teachings of Jesus about forsaking all, working for God instead of money, and living by faith in God's ultimate provision without a paid job. So we wanted to make this video specifically reaching out to those of you who are interested in stepping out in faith, but still have some concerns about the details. When we begin to consider for the first time that Jesus is actually calling on us to leave our jobs, possessions, and even our families so that we will be freed up to preach the true gospel, that is, the divine teachings and example of Jesus, with the rest of the world, it can sometimes be very frightening. We understand this, and we are, have been through a similar process of coming to terms with forsaking all ourselves. Some people write to us out of a genuine desire to know how they can begin to practice these seemingly difficult teachings of Jesus. For many, living by faith is completely uncharted territory, and so many people honestly want to know how they can actually go about the business of putting these commands of Jesus into practice. We greatly appreciate the humility that most people write to us with, as they desperately seek to understand these new revelations that they are discovering for the first time whether they are a two-day-old Christian or have considered themselves a Christian for decades. Then there are others who at first appear to be hungry for the truth, but then bombard us with a number of questions which we have heard countless times before. There's nothing wrong with questions at all, but it soon becomes pretty clear what their real agenda is, trying to prove to us that these teachings of Jesus are ridiculous, that Jesus never intended for us to put them into practice in our lives. We're all open for discussion on these topics, but only when there is truly open discussion, not a one-sided broadcast on why they think we don't have to take Jesus seriously. We're convinced that Jesus meant what He said, and we don't want to waste precious time on people who will only turn on us and would metaphorically tear us apart if they could. Here's what we are interested in, helping those sincere seekers out there who are relatively clueless as to how they can begin to live out the radical teachings of Jesus. We hope that many of you watching these videos are aware of this saying of Jesus. Quote, Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. But do you know why Jesus said such a thing? And are you aware of its full implications when taken in context with the verse that comes right before it? This is the real message of today's video that we want to share with you especially those of you who are struggling with the endless questions and doubts that may be plaguing you about what it means to forsake all, to work for God instead of money, and ultimately to truly live by faith in our Creator to provide our needs while we go into all the world and share the radical teachings of Jesus with others. Let's take a look at that verse that comes before the one we were just talking about. Here it is. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Did you notice how, after Jesus told His disciples to stop working for money, that the very next thing He tells them is, Do not worry? Why would this be the first thing He tells them not to do? We have every reason to believe, based on so many other things He taught about money, that He was telling them not to worry precisely because that's what anyone would do if they left their job. Wouldn't you? Usually when people quit one job, they have something else lined up that will help pay their bills. In terms of worldly logic, this makes sense, doesn't it? 
But here's where the extremely radical part of living by faith in God comes into the picture. Jesus tells his disciples, and by the way, that does include all of us who claim that he is our Lord and Savior, you know, that our Heavenly Father will provide for our basic needs like food and clothing if we trust him enough to let go of our jobs so that we can work on spreading his message to the rest of the world instead. Look at how Jesus compares us to the birds. Have you ever really sat and watched birds as they go about looking for food? Do you think they worry about whether food will be there or not? No. They simply know that food will be there in one way or another. It's just natural for them. But we humans are a complicated species, aren't we? We have evolved to the point of making weapons so that anyone who dares to take what we consider ours will face our wrath. We have created ideologies like good old capitalism that glorify the ability of some people, the rich, to enslave others, the poor, so they can serve them. And somehow we believe we are far advanced from the brutal animal kingdom. What a joke. If we were really so advanced, we would have taken Jesus' teachings at face value when he gave them to us, and we would be sharing all of the earth's resources in common. We would take only that which we need and leave the rest to everyone else, and then have an abundance for all that we cannot even imagine today. We have shared with many of you that this all boils down to faith, that is trust in God. But many people still ask us, but how will we actually survive if we take these teachings seriously? One very important thing to consider is how much absolute faith we place in money. If you give a three-year-old child a $20 bill, they may play with it for a while, but soon enough they will become bored with this simple piece of paper and toss it to the ground when they see something more exciting that catches their attention. This is a perfect example of what our faith in money actually means. We would quickly pick up the $20 bill from the ground and laugh to ourselves that this simple child cannot understand how valuable this piece of paper is. But which one truly sees things for what they really are, us or the child? The child knows you cannot eat the paper and would gladly toss it aside if you placed a bowl of ice cream in front of it. Another thing to deeply consider is our faith in our job to provide for our needs. Have you ever known anyone who has ever been fired or has been laid off of their job for one reason or another? Have you ever lost a job when you least expected it? This is just another example of how we have such misplaced faith in the money system. Even if you have never actually lost your job, have you ever been threatened with the real possibility of losing your job? Do you see how easy it is to assume that you will be taken care of by the system only to find out that they could replace you without any warning? So many people today are in constant fear of the state of the economy. Is this really any better than the anxiety you might face by letting go and trusting that the creator of the universe will take care of you? We would urge you to really examine these two choices, that is working for money versus working for God, and see that both options really do depend on faith when all is said and done. For those of us who have stepped out from the money system, we can say with absolute confidence that we have been taken care of by our Heavenly Father, day after day, year after year, who has promised that He will take care of us. So what's it going to be for you? Faith in a system that really couldn't care less about you and can replace you with the next person in line for your job? Or will you dare to begin to trust that Jesus knew what he was talking about? The choice is yours. We are praying that you will come to see that the answer is as clear as day, right there in the amazingly radical and fundamentally practical teachings of Jesus. So please, don't worry. Thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in stepping out in faith, we'd love to hear from you at our email provided in the description below. If you want to learn more about how you can live a radically new life, Go ahead and subscribe to our channel and watch our other videos. Bye for now.